In this video, we're going to carry on with chapter 2.6, and we're going to look at specifically look at problem 278 in the 14th edition. Uh, if you looked at the previous video, I did an example. I did an example uh, in chapter 2.6, um, which is very similar to the problem we're going to do now. So perhaps why don't you try this problem 278? Let's just have a look at it. Can first have a look at this um, at this diagram. So what we see here is we see a mast, <clears throat> and we see three forces acting at this point. We see F1, we see F2, F3. F1 is acting in, in an unknown direction. We don't know what it is. We don't know what the magnitude of F1 is. We don't know what the coordinate direction angles are, alpha 1, alpha uh, beta 1, and gamma 1. F2 is acting along the negative Z direction, and it has a magnitude of 200. And then F3 is acting along the negative Y direction, a Y axis, and it has a magnitude of 300. And the question is, it says the mast is subjected to three forces, which we just looked at, shown. It says determine the coordinate direction angles, alpha one, beta one, gamma one of F1, so that the resultant force acting on the mast is FR equal to 350I. All right? So what the question is stating is that these three forces the resultant of these three forces, when you add them up, gives us 350i, which means 350 in the x direction. So F1 plus F2 plus F3 gives us a resultant force of 350 newtons acting in the x direction. So based on all this information, what are the coordinate direction angles of F1? What's alpha 1? What's beta 1? What's gamma 1? Okay, so one way to, a way to do this is to go back and look at example 2.9, practice that, and then you can come and try this. You can even look at 279 afterwards. Um, these problems are not that difficult. Okay, so let's, let's draw this problem. Uh, again, we've got our, we've got our x, y, z axes, that's our y. That's our x, that's our z. Um, let's just extend these. Okay, so we've got this F1. We don't know its magnitude. Um, it's got its alpha 1, which is its uh, first coordinate direction angle. Then it's got beta 1, and it's got gamma 1, okay? And then we have our F2, which is equal to 200 Newton, and then we've got F3 equal to 300 Newton, okay? So remember that th these two forces are, they're simply giving us the magnitude, the magnitude, Right, we would need to then later on convert it into Cartesian vector form. So I want to remind you that the resultant force in vector form is equal to F1 plus F2 plus F3. What does this mean, guys? It just simply means if we add up the three vectors, F1, F2, and F3, we are going to get a resultant force vector. Okay? And what... And what is the resultant force vector? It is 300i. Okay, so maybe I can carry on down here. So I'm just going to write it out here to make it quite clear. Fr has, has an, a, an x component, 300, in the i direction. It has 0 in the j, and it has 0 in the k. That is my Fr. That is my resultant force in Cartesian vector notation, okay? And F1 is equal to what? 
it's equal to F1XI plus F1YJ plus F1Z in the K. And F2, how do you write this in Cartesian vector form? The magnitude is 200, and it's going in the negative Z direction. How do you write that? It is minus 200 K Newton. I forgot to put Newton here as well. And then what about F3? What about F3? F3 has a magnitude of 300, and it's going in the negative Y direction. So how do you write that? Minus 300 J Newton. Okay, so this is the first step, guys. We've got to convert. First of all, we need to understand the vector addition. Please understand what's going on here. Then understand how you write out the uh, resultant force. And then we need to convert all our forces into Cartesian vector form representation, Cartesian vector notation. So basically, what we're saying is the resultant force, right, is equal to the sum of all the forces. And the resultant force is what? It's 300I is equal to F1, which is F1XI plus F1YJ plus F1ZK. That's F1. This refers to F1. Then we have F2, which is minus... How should I do this? Let's say F2, right? Let's just put it in, let's just write it out like this, minus 200K, and we have F3, which is minus 300J. So the resultant force is equal to the sum of all the forces, okay? But just like we saw in example 2.9, a nice way of solving for these unknown components is to do what? It's to break it up into the X, Y, and Z directions, okay? So along the X, so essentially what we're doing is we are equating the X components of the resultant to the sum of all the X components. And we're equating the Y component of the resultant to the sum of all the Y components. We are equating the Z component of the resultant to the sum of all the Z components. Okay, so what do we have in the X? We have 300, because that's in the X direction, equal to F1X, that, that I component, right? And we have no more in the X. And then along the Y, we have zero for the resultant, equal to F1Y there. And then we've got minus 300. And then we've got zero again for the Z equal to F1Z minus 200. Okay? So then we can see F1X equals 300 Newton. We can see F1Y also equals 300 Newton. And we can see that F1Z equals 200 Newton. Okay, so now we've got the magnitude of this unknown force. I mean, sorry, we've got the three components of, um, of this, of F1. But the question was, what are the coordinate direction angles? Okay, so do you remember the direction cosines? Cos of alpha is equal to F1X over F1. Remember again, F1 here is different to that F1. This F1 with the bar over it is the in vector form, whereas this F1 here is the magnitude. Okay, so how do I calculate F1? Let's do it here. F1 is equal to 300 squared plus 300 squared plus 200 squared square root. That gives us, let me get out my trusty calculator, 300, let's do it in front of you. Let's see, 300 squared 
plus 300 squared plus 200 squared and then we do square root recall equals 460, 469 newton. So F1 is equal to 469 newton. I really hope this is right. We will see. Okay? So then alpha, so now, so cos alpha is then equal to 300 over 469. Similarly, cos beta is equal to 300 over 469. And we have cos gamma is equal to 200 over 469. If we so, so these are alpha 1, beta 1. Okay? So alpha 1 is then equal to fifty comma two degrees. Guys, I just uh, I just saw now that actually this should be three fifty. So this answer is actually three fifty. So please don't get confused. Please Please focus on even the methodology, even though I've made a mistake here. Please focus on the, the big picture, the methodology, okay? Um, this FR here needs to be 350, okay? So, my apologies, 350. But nevertheless, please understand the methodology that I've used. I'm going to change that to 350. That's 350, which means that F1X is 350, which means that this changes to 350 over here. And then if I do a recalculation, this actually becomes 502,5. F1 is 502,5, which means I replace all of these. That should be 350, and that's 502,5. That's 502,5, and that is 502,5. Then alpha 1 then becomes second function cos. 350 divided by 502,5, I get 45,8 degrees. For beta 1, I get second function cos 300 divided by 502,5, I get 53,3, and for gamma, I get Second function cos 200 divided by 502,5 equal to 66,5 degrees. Okay? So we've got our magnitude, which is 502,5 of F1, and we've got our coordinate direction angles. Okay? So 350, 300, and 200. So if, if we wanted to write out F1, if we wanted to write it out, we would write it out like this. 350i plus 300j plus 200k newton. And then we just saw what our uh, coordinate direction angles are. Okay? So if you have any questions, please Put a question in the comment section or you can email me. Thanks guys. Cheers.